seconds to Ansible Tower in under five minutes. In this example, I will be using a freshly installed Jenkins 2 instance and an Ansible Tower 3.2.4 instance, which I have pre-built in Google Cloud. First, we need to install some Jenkins plugins. In your Jenkins instance, select Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, and then select the Available tab. In the filter box in the upper right, search for ANSI. From the filtered items, select the Ansible Tower plugin. Optionally, if you'd like the colors from the Ansible logs in your Jenkins logs, you can also select the ANSI color plugin. Finally, click the appropriate button to install your plugin. Now that the plugins are installed, we will add a credential for Jenkins to use to connect to Tower. To do this, Go to the Jenkins homepage and select Credentials, System, Global Credentials, and then click Add Credentials. Make sure the kind is set to username and password, and then enter a username and password to connect to Tower as. For this example, we will use the admin user. In a production instance, you may want to use a dedicated account for Jenkins with restricted permissions. Don't forget to give the credential a meaningful ID and description and then click OK to save. Finally, we can make the connection from Jenkins to Tower by going to Manage Jenkins Configure System. On this page, scroll down and find the section titled Ansible Tower. This plugin supports connecting to multiple Tower instances from a single Jenkins instance. To add a connection, click the Add button. Give this instance a name, which will be displayed in the Jenkins jobs. Enter the server URL and select the credential we just made. There are two additional options which you may want to use. The first is Force Trust Cert. This will cause Jenkins to trust whatever certificate is coming from Tower. This option is not recommended for a production environment. Because this is a demo and my Tower is using a self signed cert, I will need to enable this option. The other option is Enable Debugging. This will send additional information to the Jenkins log when the plugin is executing. This can be useful for debugging issues between Jenkins and Tower, but it may lead to sensitive data being displayed in plain text in the logs. Now that everything is inputted, we can click the Test Connection button and validate that the Jenkins instance is able to connect to the Tower server. If this works, we'll see a successful message. Finally, click Save to save the configuration to Jenkins. Now we are ready to use the Tower plugin in a job. The Tower plugin supports both freestyle and pipeline based jobs. First, let's build a new freestyle job with the plugin. On the main screen of Jenkins, select New Item. Give your job a name and select Freestyle Project. For this demo, I will simply be executing a Tower job. In the Build Environment section, Select the Color ANSI Console Output option. You can leave the default map to Xterm. Now in the Build section, click on the Add Build Step button and select Ansible Tower. This adds an Ansible Tower step to your job. Select the Tower server we created and then select whether this job is a workflow template or a job template. Next, enter the template ID. This can be either the name of the template or the actual ID from the Tower API. For this example, we will be executing demo job template. The next fields are the same fields that you can use within Tower, extra vars, job tags, limit, inventory, and credential. Note that if you want to utilize these fields, your template in Tower must have the corresponding prompt on launch options enabled. If the prompt on launch option is not set, you will see a warning in the Jenkins log and Tower will ignore the settings being passed in. In addition to those fields, we have four additional options. Verbose will give you more details about the job run in the Jenkins log. Again, this can be useful for debugging. Import Tower Output will pull the logs from Tower into Jenkins. If this option is not selected, the Jenkins log will simply contain a URL to the Tower job. Import Workflow Child Output will pull the logs from all of the sub jobs as well as the workflow itself. And finally, Remove Color will tell the plugin to strip the color codes from the Ansible job output. This only shows up because we have the ANSI Color plugin installed. 
Now that we have our job configured, let's save and launch our Jenkins job and watch it run the demo job template on the tower server. At the top of the log, we can see the URL for the executing job in tower. Let's copy that URL and watch tower and Jenkins side by side. You can see that the log in tower is the same as the log in Jenkins, colors and all. Finally, let's create a pipeline job. Go to New Item, enter a name, and select Pipeline. On this screen, we will control the job through the Pipeline Groovy script. Start with a node tag. Next, we will use the Pipeline Syntax link to get the syntax for ANSI color and Ansible Tower steps. From the drop-down on this screen, select ANSI color and click the Generate Pipeline Script button. Copy the resulting code and add it to our job's Groovy script. Now, let's get the syntax for an Ansible Tower Pipeline step. From the drop-down, select Ansible Tower. Here you will see the same fields we had available to us in the freestyle job. Fill out the form the way you need to and click the Generate Pipeline Script button Again, copy the generated code and put it into our pipeline script. We can now save and build our pipeline job. In the Jenkins output of a pipeline job, we see very similar output to the freestyle job, including the URL to the tower job and the colored logs from the tower 